right. Okay, so uh, we are talking about the scenario where uh, there has been adultery, there has been an emotional entanglement, and well, uh, the question is: Is there uh, is there a possibility of restoration? Uh, yes, you know uh, that is what we see in Scripture that God is able to restore. God is able to um, you know make everything new, but it's going to take a lot of cooperation by the couple, right? So when we look at uh, what has happened, we see that. Well, there is a person who has been an offender, and there has been someone who is offended. Okay, um, the offended spouse obviously uh, has been wronged and uh, goes through a lot of pain, and uh, you know is unable to trust the spouse anymore. It's difficult. You know, it is a challenge. It is a difficult uh, situation to be in, and uh, some people could get very hardened and uh, unforgiving and uh, you know even choose to uh, not go ahead with uh, with working out the marriage right and uh, well it's uh, we know it's a scriptural reason uh, but also we know that god gives the grace for the person who is offended um Okay, uh, there's a question here. Just Elisha, is it possible the woman also falls into emo emotional adultery? Yes, of course. Um, like it, um, it is possible for both man and the woman to to yeah get emotionally entangled. Yes, very much possible. Yeah, um, because uh, we are basically human beings and unless there are those very clear-cut boundaries in our own minds you know we say okay this is this is what i will do this is what i will not do um you know we could be from uh, any kind of uh, you know background we could be strong believers we could be uh, you know even ministers of god uh, working for a church ministry you know we, we read about so many things right happening you know, because people um at their most vulnerable time, you know, made some bad choices. So it is, yes, it is possible um, to, for a woman also to fall into emotional adultery. Now, any particular question? Why? Um, any, any particular reason why you, you know, uh, ask that question? Is there any reasoning behind that, Elisha? Um, no, no, really, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just that uh, it seemed to me that we were focused on the man only. Mm -hmm. We kept mentioning the man. That's why I asked in reference to the woman also. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, like, like we were saying, well, the offended person, um, the one who has um, experienced this heartbreak, it's going to take a while, but uh, it's going to take a lot of effort and uh, you know, sometimes the person doesn't may may or may not um, be willing to work right at restoration um but the fact is this that the person who has been uh, wronged uh, well scripture says that there is possibility there is hope so if that person is willing well they, the lord gives the grace and the strength to overlook the, uh, the wrong that has been done. Uh, the thing is, some 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 of these things could have been over a period of years. Maybe they were things that were repeated. Right, all these possibilities. But the fact is that um, there are you know testimonies of people who have come out of it and come out stronger than before, and the marriage has worked. You know, uh, stronger and better uh, than before. The relationship has worked. So it is possible, right? Now the offender, the one who has actually committed the adultery, uh, either man or woman, well, needs to receive the forgiveness first of all. You know, first of all, ask for forgiveness, and when forgiveness is extended, receive forgiveness, right? Um, and uh, accept and honor the decision of the spouse. Who has been offended maybe the spouse needs time you know sometimes the person who has 
actually been the offender wants things to get back to normal immediately you know well he or she has been well found out it was not as if they confess sometimes they confess it's, it, well maybe sometimes it was exposed and it has been found out that this wrong happened and uh, well the the thing is that once they find out once they are caught then they confess say yes this is what happened but once that confession is made they want things to go back to normal you know immediately the next day now you need to understand that it doesn't happen that way not necessarily right because emotions are involved people are hurt uh trust is then broken down so it's going to take some time for those things to build up now i'm not saying that well an encounter with god and in a, in a you know uh, in a moment that god can can god restore can god yeah definitely uh, as a person is willing and receiving and um well it can happen but at the same time we need to understand that because we are human beings there are hurts there are you know um, emotions that need to be worked on trust needs to be built it's going to take some time okay so it cannot be just immediately things happening so now uh, the one who was who was the offender again needs to walk in wisdom needs to walk uh, uh, like we said you know, needs to walk in purity and holiness and to repeatedly walk in a way that will build trust i right? behave in a way that will build trust like the lord jesus says you know um that you bear fruit bear fruits worthy of repentance okay you've repented now show right show through your life show through your actions decisions your words your lifestyle that you've repented now the other the, the other spouse is looking for that and the one who has been wronged is looking for that so we need to build the confidence right so you know all that needs to be done so well this well, the thing is to to build to establish uh, those moral boundaries again to rebuild those moral boundaries again so let me just um, share that uh, right so this is uh, these are some practical steps to take yeah it's just coming up okay so there are some practical steps to take um or practical things to consider right okay. this thing is is that um uh, well even before we go into this it's like we need to maintain emotional and sexual fulfillment within the marriage I mean, in the sense that you tell yourself you know if you're the one who was the offender you know you tell that all my emotional fulfillment all my sexual fulfillment has to will come from this marriage will come from this relationship and you make a you know hard and fast decision saying that this is how it will be for me i'm not going to look outside for any of this i'm not going to search outside i'm not going to tolerate right any such emotional attachments i'm making a very surgical um you know amputation cutting away from all that and i'm going to you know draw uh my emotional needs and everything is going to come from from the marriage companionship friendship intimacy physical emotional everything will come from my spouse right to make a decision uh, uh you know a very uh, uh determined strong decision in the lord right it's like making a covenant again it's like recommitting but it needs to be done right then um don't do something that you would not like your spouse to be doing like so even if before you know thinking of sending that text thinking of you know you think about it would you like your spouse to be doing this okay, that's that's one question to ask if not don't do it right uh be careful be careful about our communication it's very very important 
because it starts uh, understand that communication is a bridge right so um, so be careful social media chatting texting emails phone calls whatever right be careful guard our mind thoughts imagination because the moment to feel that okay there are some wrong thoughts on you know, this i shouldn't be feeling this way about this girl i shouldn't be feeling this way about this guy you know uh, don't just leave it right? the holy spirit has quickened and your, your own conscience your own renewed mind has put out that red flag that warning hey you shouldn't be doing this you know you shouldn't be saying this you shouldn't be thinking this about this person it's not right well obey right be sensitive and take heed um so the thing is to confess it to god because nothing has happened nothing has you know happened yet but take it to the lord right and uh, and say okay god my thoughts need to be consecrated i choose not to think on those lines i i choose not to dwell on those things god you know that it's hurtful it's not useful it's um, destructive harmful so you know i'm not going to dwell on that right um so if you have had you know if if we have had those kind of feelings toward that person okay so we are looking at a scenario where okay maybe as a married person you are having those kind of feelings towards someone who is not your spouse so be careful with future in- interactions you know you dealt with it you know you've taken those uh, you spent your time with god and saying okay god you know what uh, this happened so i'm you know i need i f- i need your forgiveness i consecrate so future interactions be careful right um sometimes it's not not even us maybe it's the other person who's showing uh a lot of interest who wants to spend a lot of time so it's the other person who is uh, drawing us out with their constant texts and uh, constant calls and so on so draw those lines right um you know, so don't do not open up you know uh, to that extent maybe they're, they're asking some questions which you don't have to answer you just you can cut it off right um and uh, so when you when you sense that this is this is not okay that it's not okay I just go with it no problem and then especially you know for people who are in ministry maybe your pastor maybe you're leading a, you know a fellowship and so on um you know definitely you you will be interacting with a lot of people um you know and uh, and definitely you know it could be the opposite gender so when there are you know when there are these kind of interactions and you and you feel that okay there's a lot of you know attention there's a lot of uh, you know interactions that's happening and it's 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 not really required um so you can just maybe if answer to the point if there is a genuine quest i mean genuine query for information and point that person to someone else who can help right. so yeah so don't open up is to be brutally honest okay so sometimes we give ourselves too much of grace <laughs> right the thing is to be uh, really be brutally honest in this area and know that that you uh, you know you it is possible for you to fall so be brutally honest right okay then um, don't flirt don't play with other people's emotions um you know, sometimes just leading people on um and also denying that you you know you just let them on okay so so what do we mean by that we are saying okay maybe you're just you know uh, you know complimenting their physical beauty or their uh, uh you know attitude i mean their, their attributes and um 
and you kind of lead them on to think that you're actually interested you know that i you know saying okay it's just harmless don't do that don't do that right um so that that is again if you if you do that you're actually compromising on that boundary um staying away from pornography and other sexually explicit material you know again opens us up so in whatever form it is you know whether it's print whether it's videos whether it's uh, you know in whatever form whether it comes in social media just you know clean up that act right? don't uh, don't open the door for any of it um and uh, establish boundaries right now uh, if you're a single person right if the person is single yes certain things you know, might seem like okay then how do i meet uh, the other person and if i op don't open myself up emotionally well when you know that okay this is not the kind of person that you should be interacting with we looked at you know initially we looked at how compatibility and uh, you know uh, uh, all those other factors to consider uh, spiritually emotionally uh, also other things like uh, finances and all those things all those areas uh, have you know factors to consider and you know when you're considering someone um, to to really get that okay from god right and if you're not very sure you know checking with other people other godly people others who are in your life we, we looked at all that in the initial few chapters now um, now these model boundaries uh, for a single person you know you can establish it strong establish strong so that um, you know once you are married then you, there's no compromise right even as a single person when when things are firm and established and then you, know, you will not depart from it uh, once you are married right okay so these are some things for us uh, you know uh, for some of us in uh, ministry okay uh, stay away from maybe counseling people of the opposite gender right they're saying okay but you know there's a real need and uh, i feel that i you know i have the expertise and the calling well it's great um but do it with another person right maybe do it with your spouse maybe you can you know counsel a, with another person um and not alone right because when you are counseling you are you know people are sharing their emotions and the innermost needs and hurts and so on and then uh, it is quite possible that um, if these are repeated interactions then you could find yourself being drawn feeling pity like feeling sad getting emotionally attached uh, wanting to you know emotionally be there and as the encourager you know as the shoulder to cry on etc so so don't do that don't get into you know we should not get into that kind of a situation avoid that kind of a situation uh, the best thing to do is okay you know we cannot avoid that first call or first interaction because maybe you know you're a you're a pastor you're a, people are saying okay i need to um you know i need help so well uh, suggest someone else okay? maybe of the same gender or you know su suggest someone else for that person so that they can um uh, they can be helped right and you don't have to be there in that situation okay um also it is good to avoid discussing personal problems emotional topics etc you know with a colleague with a um, you know if you're a married person you know with a colleague or with someone uh, alone right if it's an emotional topic you know, always include your spouse there uh, if it's someone of the opposite gender so this is it, it can be actually resolved in a healthy manner right and it's a safeguard where you're actually helping that person and you are not uh, hurt you're not putting yourself in a compromising situation right uh, maybe intentions are you know our intentions are sincere we really want to help that person but uh, we, we need to do it in the right way right maybe with the company of others with uh, with a spouse and uh, we can really help the person in the right way and be a protective a guard for that person as well not to be drawn to oneself or to you you know emotionally right okay and um, 
if there has been you know past relationships it has to be se severe mean cut and it has to be done intentionally it cannot be you know uh, you cannot go back you cannot revive communication uh, you know don't revive those things those things are better left untouched you know if it's and so be intentional about cutting away those uh, relationship and uh, whatever else you know the lord will speak and you know maybe particularly for us you know, as an individual maybe there are certain things that certain blind spots and uh, which we don't see and maybe god is god speaks and says okay this is something that you need to do well you're saying okay others are not doing it uh, but the lord is specifically saying you know maybe a son daughter you know uh, this i feel this is your weak spot so you better you know in this season you better take god you know, guard yourself you better strengthen yourself in this season um so you do it right so these are some things um this is a very important aspect of married life and a continuing aspect of married life where we have healthy boundaries okay and it's not weird boundaries it's not to make ourselves uh, become very legalistic and say you know oh, i'm going to put blinders on i'm going to put shades and i'm no it's it's not that it's just that it's a very healthy way of doing life uh, uh, and having healthy relationships right okay any questions on on this aspect of moral boundaries in marriage um before we move on to the next topic any questions or anything that you may want to add any challenges uh, or any scenarios um, okay uh, also i just want to say that you know while establishing these boundaries uh, these are not very comfortable at times right uh, maybe uh, someone is saying you know I, I just need to talk to you alone i need to share these things and it's it's well it's it's not very comfortable by right? establishing these boundaries and but then once these are established and you maintain it uh, over a period of time then it, people also understand right? um, i'm just talking to us some of us in ministry and uh, you know if you're going to be in future considering you know ministry and these are some things to consider right okay okay so if there are no questions um can i can any... i add something yeah 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 sure isaac please go ahead yeah, yeah thank you very much pastor for the discourse uh, i agree with you on the yeah, on the topic of this uh, moral boundaries especially for us who are married it's absolutely right but um in the case of uh, single people and during the such period, okay, do they have to make this moral boundary rigid or can they be a bit flexible when single people are in this stage of searching? Like we were saying before, that when we are single and preparing for, to, for, for marriage, we have to look out. We don't sit down between our friends, we have to look out. So what is the scenario? Uh, how could how could the safeguard be or the boundary be for single people yeah yeah so um so when it comes to single people of course uh, we are saying that a person has reached a stage where they are considering marriage and they are maybe searching seeking out looking for um, you know godly life partner of course they will have to interact they will have to talk they will have to find out more about that person and also share more about oneself you know with that person um, but uh, this is before they make that decision right before they make the decision before they make the choice you know we looked at chapter 3 right i think you can go back to it and look at that so before we make the choice we looked at compatibility you know, spiritual compatibility emotional compatibility physical compatibility and compatibility with regard to with regards to life's calling okay now these are uh, important things to consider right uh, during 
uh, you know that search and uh, maybe you are you know you're just being um, uh, you're you're being a good friend maybe um, just talking about you know common things and getting to know about that person and you're not really emotionally involved but then this person come comes across as a as a nice person a nice guy a, a, a good girl and uh, you're talking about and a person who loves the lord and uh, and then you begin to find out in your interactions you know um in conversations you're finding out that okay this is what the person's calling is this is what their values are and this is how, what they walk in uh, you know with god is and uh, and then you you know you 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 tried out okay these compatibility and you know is there physical compatibility you know are you physically attracted to that person or not you know which is again you know not the only factor but then one of the factors then uh, what is their call you know what are they called to do uh, we saw that you know it, if their call is something else totally different from uh, your call or I mean what what you sense to be God's call for you then there's not going to be agreement you know a simple example is okay maybe they are called to the city and you are called to some rural areas and and you find that there's absolutely you know completely different right so these are things to consider even before emotionally opening up and sharing uh, about one's life right so so that's the thing um so for the single person yes you are seeking you are searching you are interacting and all that in a healthy way uh, but you you know once you find that okay this is going somewhere then you open up yeah more uh, and talk about those things right so uh, so there's a lot more emotional thing happening once you've established yes this is this is a person to consider and, and maybe even made the choice you know you um saying yeah uh, or made it made the decision mutually saying that yes uh, i think this is something that god has called us for and we feel right about it and then you open up more emotionally yeah i hope that helps isaac yeah it's okay pastor that's very correct yeah. like you are saying even for a single person yeah, their boundaries cannot be rigid, but they have to get safeguards. They should not be going like playing pranks because mm. that is that is not Christ-like. I agree with right. you. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts? Any any other questions from? Maybe uh, you're in a different culture. Yeah, you're in a different uh, social setting. Um, you have anything to share? What do you think? Would this be applicable? Is it practically possible? Okay, okay. Okay, so if there are no thoughts, then we'll just uh, move forward. Um, uh, we're going to look at um, um, the um, the whole responsibility and aspect of parenting you know this is this is also something for for a person to be uh, to to understand you know from the word of god and uh, look at some of these practical uh, things that okay um, because you know what happens is okay people get married then they have children and uh, it is understood or you know the uh, that okay you need to know what to do Right, or you kind of stumble your way through, okay, how about parenting and what to do, what not to do, and a lot of things are cultural. You know, there's a lot of free advice coming, unsolicited advice coming from all quarters. You know, relatives and uh, especially you know in a in a place like India, right? there's a lot of uh, you know from the families, a lot of things coming. You know, this is how, uh, especially about taking care of the child. 
right? Okay, this is what the child should eat, and uh, you know, from you know, within six months, this is what they should do. You give water, then all kinds of things, right? You can't give water. You you should give water. You can't give you know solid when it comes to solid food. Okay, you can't give this. You can't give that. all kinds of advice. You know, coming some healthy, some unhealthy. So it's good for us to understand. Okay, what is the role of the you know, here the father and the mother is uh, when it comes to uh, parenting, right? When it comes to this awesome, uh, at the same time, wonderful privilege of parenting a child, right? So, uh, well, uh, so so it's, it's good for us to understand that. So that's why it's, uh, you know, we, we are looking into it, parenting, nurturing children. How do we do that? You know, does the word of God have anything to say uh, to that, right? Okay, so um, yeah, let me just share the screen. Okay, so let's look at uh, the first thing to do is uh, for us to well, not to look at parenting as a burden, okay, not to look at children as something that's inconvenient sometimes you know I, I don't think anyone would actually do that any parent would do that but i'm saying there is the possibility right um to when when someone could look at marriage as something inconvenient my freedom is gone i can't do the things that i used to do i can't you know because of a wrong understanding of marriage wrong understanding of the roles in marriage it is possible for someone to have a wrong understanding of parenting as well and look at children as something inconvenient babies as you know they're crying through the night and you know why did we ever have you know all that those kind of thoughts so the first thing is to know that we are called okay um, in God's plan and purpose, his original intent is this. You look at Malachi 2, verse 15. Didn't God make you one body and spirit with her? He's talking about uh, marriage. Uh, what was his purpose in this? It was that you should have children who are truly God's people, so make sure that none of you breaks his promise to his wife. And it's like, actually talking about divorce and being unfaithful and so on. But in that, we see this, um, you know, we see this instruction. What is the God's purpose? What is God's intent um, in all this? Right? Um, that you should. Why did God make you one body and spirit? Uh, you know, in in marriage, so that you would have. This is the purpose that you would have godly offspring. You would have uh, children. Right? So, um, so we need to really embrace this. Meaning, we need to get used to the idea hey this is god's call for me right as much as you know we are ans asking him oh god what is the call you know in ministry what do you want me to do where you want me to be etc you know your god is saying okay uh, you're married you have children and um or a child whatever hey this is god's call so what do we do with the call we acknowledge and we Embrace it, make it part of our life, right? So, so that's the first thing. Embrace it. Embrace the call of God. And uh, secondly, understand that we, as parents, we represent God to our children, right? Uh, we represent God to our children. We represent the Father, the Heavenly Father. So, um, meaning the mother also represents God. And we represent the Heavenly Father. Uh, Ephesians 3, verse 14 and 15. For this reason, I fall on my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its true name. Uh, the Good News Bible says. Um, let me just read from the New King James. Um, Ephesians 3. I bow my, uh, sorry, 3, 14 and 15. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Okay. Um, so the family is named 
uh, or called. So it receives its true name. Psalm 127, verse 3, behold, the verse that, that portion that we read this morning, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Okay, so uh, we represent, understand that, yes, they are inherit. I've received this inheritance so from the Lord. So meaning that, you know, when you look at what inheritance is, yeah, inheritance is something that uh, I receive. And uh, well, if you if you actually look at a worldly or earthly inheritance, it's something that was that belonged to someone, and I received it because of relationship, right? Because of relationship, because it was it was just vested upon me. So. Here it says that the children are a heritage. One twenty seven, Psalm one twenty seven, verse three, heritage, uh, which means that you actually uh, is an inheritance that you receive from the Lord. They are an inheritance from the Lord. So uh, children belong to God. God is entrusting us, and uh, with this inheritance, and it's a, it's it's awesome when you think of it that way. Wow. I need to take care. I need to take care of this inheritance right, that I've received from the Lord. Uh, when it comes to children, like the same way, the Heavenly Father relates to us. And right? he, he displays his agape. He extends his agape, unconditional love towards us. So same way, we as earthly parents, you know, that we would extend uh, this agape, right? Um, Psalm, I'm sorry, Ephesians three seventeen. Uh, I pray that Christ will make His home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you would have your roots and foundations in love. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love. That love is God kind of love. That you be rooted and grounded in love. For what? Right, so that we can uh, express the same kind of love in all our earthly relationships, right? And more so when it comes to children. So children experience, children should actually experience this agape love. And God has placed them and given them, given us an inheritance so we can actually show this unconditional love towards them as well, right? We are also... Uh, child's role model you know uh, we we are actually the heroes uh, they may not say it uh, initially they may say it they may say you know that we are actually their heroes um, and they look up to us well they uh, uh, the, 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 they look up to us they you know they are they adore us but they, they also comes the stage when they you know uh, go f away from that kind of a uh, thing, especially when they go through, you know, teenage uh, years and so on. Uh, they think, you know, like um, I think it was, um, I forget which author, um, one of the English uh, poets, I think, who, who says, you know, this is what happens. Like right? at one stage, well, uh, the children think the world of me. I'm just trying to see where I've written it down somewhere. Um, I'll probably share that later. So, um, you know, they think the world of me and the world of us, they, they, are, the, they are the heroes, uh, take advantage of that right? because they will come a phase when they think, okay, maybe dad, maybe mom doesn't know everything, <laughs> right? And there comes a stage where they're saying, like, uh, you know, I know everything and uh, they don't know anything. Uh, it's a season that they go through and then they come back and they realize, okay, there, there is wisdom. There is actually some kind of, uh, you know, sense in what my parents are saying. So they will come back to that. So we are our ch children's role model. Um, you know, Proverbs 17.6 says, old people are distinguished by grandchildren. Children take pride in their parents. Um, so actually, uh, when they look at us, we are their heroes. Uh, we are their teachers. We, uh, they they reflect mirror our um, you know our speech they mirror our um, our behavior right they literally walk in our footsteps right I'm sure you've seen 
a, a little one, you know, trying to wear maybe the mother's uh, footwear, you know, maybe it's a, it's a flip-flop, a slipper or a shoe, or they're trying to walk, you know, in, they're trying to literally walk in your footsteps, right? walk in your shoes. And maybe you've done that as a child, you know, trying to wear the, those shoes of your, of your mother, father, or your guardian, right? So, um, to make the most of it, right? we are their role model. And also as parents, uh, not only are we, you know, providing love, unconditional love and care and nurture, uh, but also we need to provide training. We need to train them to face life. Train them so that they can, and position them so that they can, um, they can be, um, they have the best shot at life. Uh, succeeding in life they're the best start maybe and uh, so we are called to train you know, Proverbs 20 to 6 uh, teach a child how he should live or teach children how they should live and they will remember it all their lives I I'm sure as parents we we recognize uh, or even remember some of those things our parents uh, our parents taught us as adults we recognize uh, well, at least something, you know, one thing uh, sticks out maybe. You know, this was a lesson that I learned, you know, from my parent. Maybe if you didn't have parents, maybe from a guardian or you know, from a, a person who was uh, older who took care of you. Uh, this is the lesson that I learned, right? So um, we are supposed to provide that training as parents, right? So it can be in the area of uh, values or principles. Right, so we can teach values. We can teach principles. Hey, this is how. This is these are some things that you should esteem in life. Meaning honesty, maybe punctuality, uh, um, you know, integrity, and so on. Values, principles, um, respecting others, honoring others, being kind to others, being truthful to oneself. Um, these are things that we would again train them in values and principles. Um, also, disciplines. Disciplines like yeah, uh, certain things to do with character, certain things to do with maybe yeah, punctuality, timeliness, and doing things that we may not always enjoy doing, but then it needs to be done, right? Um, so, um, so, some disciplines that will really help us, um, help them, and also life skills. Okay, life skills regarding maybe the usage of certain things. You know, this is how you use a computer. This is how you, um, you, know, you know, check things online or you know, age appropriately. Of course, um, this is how you handle finances. Uh, some of those things will, the, all these things really will be invaluable. You know, life skills, simple things like maybe riding a bike or you know, how do you buy certain things this is what you do so you know we train them right, intentionally um also to help discover the call you know? so it, we see that this is a journey right it's a it's something that is progressive in nature right so just understand that they are watching they are um, uh, your words hearing your words listening to your words watching your life um the thing is that um, since we are examples, role models, uh, if there's a disconnect between what we say and what we do, they are very, very quickly pick up, pick that up, and we 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 find that it's a challenge to enforce that thing in their lives because it's a disconnect in our own lives. Right? Uh, they they might do it because you know you have the authority and you're saying yeah this is how it is, but then really internally. Um, that conviction is not there because there's a disconnect. Okay, so we need to be careful, right? Um, the other thing is to understand our children. Okay, now Proverbs 127, the verse that we read, uh, talks about how children are arrows. Arrows need to be sharpened. Arrows need to be aimed at. Arrows need to be released in the, you know, in the direction that they need to go. So uh, 
you know, so arrows need to be sharpened in the sense they need to be prepared. They need to be aimed at a target. You know, we need to position, prepare them, and give them a vision, um, you know, a goal, maybe, and and also understand, you know, try to understand what is it that they are moved by, what is it that they are inspired by. Um, you know, we see that um, well, children are very unique, right? Each child is unique. Each child is unique. You know, in the same family, different and unique. Unique in its, and that's how God creates. Right? Uh, so they they might have a lot of similarities, but they also have some very distinct, unique um, characteristics. So um, understand, you know, what those strengths are. Understand what those likes are. Appreciate it. Right? Many times, we want, um, you know, maybe what we missed out. We want to force, you know. I missed out on piano lessons. I, I never learned piano. My child is going to learn piano, whether he or she likes it or not. You know, um, yeah, we kind of force them into a mold, kind of press them into something that they're not maybe created for. Right. So we need to understand, be sensitive, and understand. Okay, what is it? Yeah. Well, sometimes we know that. Okay, they are holding back from really stepping in because of maybe fear maybe because of some insecurity again it takes uh, a bit to understand right understand uh, them is it because of fear that they're holding back is it because of some uh, something else is it because they don't have the ability make that distinction uh, i remember like when, when our daughter was um, uh, growing up she was extremely shy I'm extremely shy. Um, in fact, she would not say hello to every anyone, and uh, you know. And we were, of course, uh, you know, in church, and so every Saturday there'll be uh, this tutoring session. She was, I think, three years, four years, whatever. Maybe, maybe slightly older, but you said, you know, you just wish somebody says hello, please say hello, uh, you know. But then Sunday morning comes, and uh, well. There is Pastor Ashish who's looking at our daughter and saying, Hello, Ruthi. <laughs> she turns her face. <laughs> Even after those repeated lessons, you know, she's extremely shy. Um, then, uh, but then we knew that she had these talents, all these uh, some abilities, one of which was, of course, uh, to sing and so on. So I tried to encouraging her, why don't you why don't you do this? Why don't you take part? No, no chance. Then suddenly. I think uh, I don't know how this happened, but she signed up for a singing competition. She just signed up, or I don't know. Maybe the teacher forced. She did so, and then, and I remember we we were all there, and she was literally shaking, shivering, and she after singing, she came back and told us I was literally shaking. My legs were all shaking. My you know, but then she did well, and then um, the. And we always encouraged her, saying, "Okay, it doesn't matter. You know, you do just do your best. Right? Just do your best." So she won something, and then she realized that, "Hey, I can do this. Maybe I should." And and uh, and even then, she would not go for classes, uh, any instrument. She was always very shy. No, I don't want to go for classes. So we had to wait and see. We knew that there was the ability, but then there was this personality which was preventing her from. You know, making full use of that ability. We just have to wait, be patient, be encouraging, uh, till it came to a place where she said, "Yeah, maybe I can do that." And and then it really helped, right? So um, so we need to understand, right? Um, the other thing is to also grow up uh, with our children when it comes to how we are involved with them. You know, we also grow up. We also change. Right. Uh, when we say grow up, we also change in our involvement with them. We also change, right? Um, and a simple table here, when it comes to child zero to five years, okay, the numbers are years. So uh, childhood, zero to five years, okay, we are going to be nurturing, we are going to be caring, we are doing things for them most of the time, right? Um, if it's uh, yeah, zero to five, yeah, 
so uh, if it's zero to two, it's going to be a lot of things. You know, we are, we are helping them in every way. But well, it's two to five, then we are, yes, we are guiding them, helping them. Um, what about age six to 12? Well, there's a lot more instructions. Uh, we are being a little more authoritative by giving instructions, do this, do that, try this, try that. And also, uh, you know, disciplining. Like, if you don't do this, there will be consequences. Okay, there's nothing wrong. That is that is the age to to discipline to establish uh, certain standards and so on. Right, so we do that. Um, then, when it's the teenage years or preteens um, till you know eighteen years old, it's more of um, we're still disciplining, we're still establishing standards, but we are more like a teammate. You know, we are with them. We are participating, encouraging, empowering. Uh, equipping to a very participative, supportive, encouraging role, right? Um, they will be establishing of standards also because adolescent years, they are you know, not quite adults yet. So when it comes to adults, young adults, 18 to 21, then our role as parents, again, it changes. We are more like coaches, right? We are influencing them. We are working alongside, we are discussing, sharing ideas, taking suggestions, uh, enabling them to uh, come to certain decisions. Right? So you see, um, and you know, and beyond, right? Uh, if you're 21 plus, we are more of advising, conversing again, uh, respecting their opinion, respecting their decisions, and so on. So you see that we also change in our parenting, you know, in our level of engaging and we are always involved with them but the way we are involved um, as our children grow uh, changes right? and as parents if we don't understand this there's going to be a lot of conflict there's going to be a lot of struggle right okay so we'll stop here um, we're going to look at uh, some more in the next class in our next session uh, next Tuesday um, also, I think that next Tuesday would be, uh, I'm just checking the date, would be 22nd. OK, so what we will do is this. Um, the final few chapters we will look at in our next class. But till parenting, you know, we will have uh, as part of our uh, quiz, right? quiz number two. So, so uh, till what we have covered today, and e-learning students, the same would go for you, what you watch in this video, um, till what we have covered here. Um, today um, as part of uh, parenting is um, uh, till till yeah, we'll have it for our um, second quiz right so um, and then the next class we will we will continue and we will finish uh, the, the other chapters that we need to do okay okay so that's something that I just wanted to share okay thank you so we'll take a break and uh, yeah we'll meet again God bless and thank you, Pastor. Right, Isaac. God bless.